Okay, hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here from the Rugged Arts and today, as you can see, I'm standing in the shop, Colby's shop to be specific, from Sculpt Skulls. If you don't know about them, you should check them out online. Where can people find you real quick before we get going? Uh, so it's uh, at Sculpt Skulls on Instagram. I believe it's the same for Facebook. And then uh, www.sculptskulls.com is the website. Perfect. And that should be about it. All right, Sculpt Skulls. What are we talking about here? I mean, you kind of see we got on, what on the table here is a wood representation of a skull. Yeah, you know, uh, um, like the traditional Euro mount. Okay. Uh, but either one breaks or somebody skull capped their animal a long time ago. And um, <clears throat> right. it wasn't initially intended for anything to do with... Uh, with skull caps or somebody's animal that they've harvested it was initially intended for shed antlers uh going out you find a set or you find a single shed and just looking for a way to display it on the wall that's different than the normal plaster mount or plastic mount or you know the iron bucks just is totally kind of a different material so we went with that and started started carving away on the skulls and and making different models the very first one was an elk and then you know it's gone from there that's cool so how did you get started into like the carving of of the skull i mean so you come from from we kind of talked earlier you come from a carving background kind of explain how that got going and and how you evolved into this yeah so when i was i was probably 10 years old and my dad uh he was doing dirt work uh, he's done dirt work since he was like 20 and he got to where he was uh, built cabinets and done all sorts of woodworking, but he never really carved a whole lot. So he always saw the guys down at the fair carving and he was like, oh, I want to do that. So he built a log home. He wanted to put carvings in the log home. And so he was doing all these carvings and I was young and kind of wanted to do it along with him. So started doing chainsaw carvings and we went to shows all over um, California Oregon, Washington. He went down to New Mexico to carve, and oh wow, we went over to Hawaii. So it's been it was a super, it's, it's awesome. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> and then I, I was doing carving full time from 2018, I think 2018 to probably, well, it was 2020. Well, I think it was 21 February of 21 when I start when I did the very first skull, okay. and then. February of 22 is when I really kind of started and now so it's been about a full year a little over a full year of of making these and getting them out to people and things like that but um, really slow process right um, so yeah we, we we started doing this after the, the carving background you know my buddy was like hey I want to I want a skull to put my sheds on and I had thought about it a couple times and never really Never really went at it because I was a little bit worried about like the intricacies of it. And oh, sure. I mean, because there's a lot going on with the skull. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, being a hunter and knowing what they look like and then also the carving side of things, I didn't want to do one that that wasn't a really close representation. Like, of course, they're not spot on, you know. Right. All animals are different anyways. So sure. it's kind of the beauty of it. Um, so, yeah, we started. I, I made one up, the very first one. I have the model over there and uh, kind of just went from there that's really cool i mean I, and we'll talk about your machine uh, a little bit because you don't just do it all by hand i mean you do a fair portion of it with the dremel absolutely where you get in the finite details like we were uh looking at and yeah you guys will see this uh in some montages here in a minute but it's really cool you take it from a block of wood and you use like a an old school manual CNC to hog it out, yeah, and take it, you know, get the majority of the material out of there, and then you go from there. How long does just the hogging it out and getting it roughed take? Yeah, so the very first deer skull that I made, uh, it, I think I was right about twenty hours, and that was a, a glued up block, uh, my chainsaw, die grinders, all my tools, and just. Uh, taking a deer, uh, actual Euro mount as a reference, measuring, drawing out on the wood and cutting, and then going back and forth. And, and I finally got to basically this model is my very first deer model. Um, and it kind of, I, I like the way it looks, so I've kept it. I haven't messed with it. Um, maybe a revamp here shortly, but it went from 
the, the first one being 20 hours to about five hours at this point. So it takes me about, I would say I budget about an hour to get the blocks, to get the wood ready, glued, and the block set and ready for the machine. Okay. It takes about two hours, roughly, to cut out two deer skulls. Okay. And then, obviously, I've, I cut them down to shape, so there's not so much to remove. And then uh, after that, the finished process is probably the longest process. Takes It probably takes anywhere from two to three hours to finish one, depending on the hardness of the wood. So maple takes the longest because it's hard. Sure. you got to go slow with the tools or they mm -hmm. burn. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it takes about five, I would say, anywhere from four to six hours on a deer skull at, at this point. Wow. And then obviously the bigger the skull, the longer it takes, the more yeah. detail you put in there with the cracks and, you know, all the seams where skulls naturally come together. Yeah. That takes longer. And then you even go as far as to put the teeth in on on, on uh, some of those other ones that I've looked at where yeah. you actually dremeled the teeth on. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. It's not like, you know, when I picture uh, a Euro-esque type of a mount for sheds or whatever, um, it's like a silhouette of a skull. It's not detailed like this. This is right. like, so when I saw you at the sportsman show, I was like, what is going on here? This is cool. <laughs> Thanks man. Uh, because it's just uh, from an artistic standpoint, being an artist myself, I Absolutely. understand how much time it takes to, to do all that detail. So I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Well, especially, you know, I appreciate that. Cause you know, you see, I saw your leather work and man, just every stroke, you know? Oh yeah. Every stroke is a, is a piece of the pattern. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, every, yeah, it's not like you emboss it with a big metal stamp. No, you, <laughs> right. the leather workers have to do every single impression. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Yeah. So. I did a question one time about like, I did a piece for Archer World Pro Shop. Okay. A leather piece. And one of the targets, uh, like I, I, what I call deleting, I, I stamped out the, the circle and I asked online, like, how many stamps do you think it took for me to make this? Oh right? yeah, and this, uh, some people you know had different numbers, but uh, it was over 150 stamps just to make this one little deleted dot. Dang. Because I go through and I'll do it, and then I look at it and I'm like, ah, looks like garbage, right? Because yeah. it's all like uneven or whatever. So then I'll go back and I'll hit it. And right. I imagine it's the same here with the wood. Oh you yeah. You go through and you rough it out, and you're getting closer. You're getting closer, and then even when you get to like a final situation you're still kind of eyeballing it like ah uh, could i make it a little better absolutely <laughs> oh no doubt i mean i think that's like one of the the sides of doing art it's you can look at it and be like you can always find something that you could have done better and obviously with this you know it's it's i try to do my best on everyone given the kind of the time frame i have for them now with the amount of orders i've had come in but I've also had to raise the price so that that quality are. doesn't get hindered yeah. later. Like, yeah. cause I want to send something out and have people like it instead of send something out and have somebody be like, well, it's got these little scratch marks in it. And yeah, you know, so I, I try to do my best and uh, on everyone. So, okay. So you, you hog it out and you know, so building the block takes like an hour or two and then you're hogging it out on your manual CNC and that takes, you know, another two, three, four hours. And then the actual Dremel portion where you're finalizing it, that, that only takes like five hours? Uh, so, For a deer skull, I mean? So, yeah. So, the I would say – I don't have it in here. Uh, the So, from right here, yeah, this is sanded on the, the outer portion sanded. So, there's a little bit more to do. But basically, I'll come in with the die grinder and get these big, these big spots that need to be removed. Mm -hmm. I'll go in and take all those out. Then I'll come in with an air tool and start sanding in all this and cleaning it all out. So from basically from this stage right here, more of a rough stage, oh, um, yeah. to this takes about um, – doesn't take that long really. It's about 20 to 30 minutes to get it sanded. But I would say from, from a roughed out on the machine to a detailed finished skull is about no more than – no more than three hours. Oh, wow. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. then like an elk skull, since it's like three times bigger, probably takes three times longer. Yeah. You know, it, it does. And it, it, 
I think because it's the same form, the only thing that really takes longer is the the length of the sutures mm -hmm. are longer, and then the actual the the actual sanding of it. But it's is it's an enlarged version, so it, you'd think it takes a lot longer, but it, it doesn't really take that much longer. It takes about I would say it takes about three and a half to four hours to do an elk skull, which is I don't know why. You know, it, it's obviously the size differences. It's quite, it's quite a lot. Yeah, that that's a, a pretty massive difference. Here, I'll hold the elk skull here, and uh, this is fun. Yeah, <laughs> side by side there. Yeah, you can clearly see one is bigger than the other, and you can feel that weight difference. Too. Yeah, it's wood. Yeah, holy moly, that black one is very heavy. And that was another. And then thing. you throw some antlers on there. Yeah, oh. you have a good hanger, right? Yeah. So speaking of the hangers, how do you how 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 do you secure your the antlers to the wood? Yeah, so uh, I, I it took me a long time to figure out how to get them secured without um, without crushing. So this is you can feel that like the the weight of that is super light. Yeah, but that's a softer wood. Too. So that's yeah. a super soft wood. So we had to start using all hardwoods because it's basically a, a compression through the skull. Mm -hmm. how the antlers fit on so they're they're all pre-drilled and then you have a, a nut and a washer and then okay, you're both yeah, on yeah, top yeah, yeah, yeah. and basically the base of your antler pulls flat to whatever surface you have so that's kind of how you set mm -hmm. um whether or not it's a tall buck or a, a wide buck or a you know a buck that grew forward like some antlers get right. knocked forward and back so you kind of have to play with that angle to get your antler set but it, it basically pulls to that flat surface and when it pulls to that flat surface you, you're basically kind of crushing crushing the wood oh sure yeah, yeah now yeah. the hardwoods don't crush these softer woods were crushing though if you went too tight with them mm -hmm. you could hear the wood starting to split oh, so yeah. i'm just like you know i'm not gonna go with the i mean for a anymore. longevity of a product yeah you right know, yeah a harder wood makes sense mm -hmm. and i just had a guy uh he uh, builds rifles or something mm -hmm. and he was talking about like pillar beddings blanks or i guess kind of similar to the one i was showing you it's, it's basically a metal tube that goes in here that kind of oh yeah a, yeah yeah like a sleeve like a sleeve yeah and then you just, throw your bolt through there and you have a washer on either end. and then the compression is happening on the sleeve on and the, you can use whatever exterior material right. you want exactly that makes sense but and it's you're just epoxying it in there totally it's not going anywhere yeah cool all right so we understand kind of how you got to here you you know uh, your process in a nutshell. I don't want to get too involved with with the process. I mean, we'll we'll show some video here in, in a minute. Uh, uh, how you you go through all your different stages and whatnot. Mounting to the wall, then it's heavy. Yeah, that's just uh, kind of left up to the customer. Do you give like suggestions or? Yeah, so I can show. So I've been using um, it's a dead on display. Okay, I'm sure you've probably seen them on. On no, Instagram, maybe? I, I have it. No, so it's a it's a really cool hanger, and that looks pretty simplistic. That looks just like a coat hanger. Yeah, a dirty coat hanger. So I basically just drill a very small pilot hole, uh -huh. and this these are the elk hangers. So okay. I drill a really small pilot hole, and I screw this all the way in until it's base. So in the hardwoods, it's it's really sturdy, and then this just screws to the wall, and this is comes out at about a I don't know thirty to a forty degree angle so it gives it like a good little rake and it gives it a good little hook well when it sits in there just kind of like the elk's gonna sit on the wall so in order for it to come off it's got to come out and then up and, and kind of back a little bit to come off the wall so if somebody were to hit it and knock it sideways like it's not gonna it's not necessarily gonna fall it actually can't fall off until it comes out and up i've tried to to, to spin them before and they end up hitting at a certain point because of the angle that this is at Oh, it okay. hits and it won't let it actually do a full rotation. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, these hangers that they they sell them for all sorts of skulls. So like if you've got an actual Euro mount, um, they've got a. It's a different uh, Landon who owns that on display. He uh, kind of came up with this for the wood skulls. Mm -hmm. um, but he's also got a really cool method that it's like a U a U shape. It's almost like a wing nut that okay. goes in the cranial hole. Uh huh. And, and then there's a threaded rod that goes in and a piece of string and you pull the, the string and that it pulls to the, the U shape pulls to the back of the cranial hole. 
Oh, you thread that rod in, and then it's basically the same concept with a, a loop on the back, and it hooks down on that. And he's got pictures on his website and videos of cats walking up on stuff and, and throwing balls at, at them, and they're just they're not coming off the wall. Hey, that's so, what you want. You don't want it to fall. Exactly. So that was kind of my reason for going with the hanger. So I, I try to send these out with every skull. Okay. Nice. So at now. that's your gift with purchase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you do deer, you do elk. Uh, you've, you've done a couple shows, so I, from the sounds of it, you're getting orders. Are you getting orders for things you don't do? Like, what, like, I mean, you're still, uh, building. Yeah. Your, your, your process and your, not repertoire, your inventory. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So deer elk, I see what looks like a ram. Uh, so this is actually a guy sent this to me. Um, it's a kudu. Oh, so nice. So he got this over in Africa. Um, I had been building those pieces for it, and then I'm gonna have to build a couple teeth, and then I'm gonna do a replica for his horns. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna eventually maybe try and carve some black walnut kudu oh, horns and put dope. this on there. So, anyways, but I'm carving a nose piece. Um, this is something totally new. Uh, I've never done a kudu before, so it should be pretty. That's new gnarly experience. looking. And then uh, other I than that, I didn't realize that the base had that internal spin neither like did that. I. Isn't that cool? I mean, That's it would the, make sense because they, yeah, they spin all the way up. So you know that the ridge on kudu horns, like the yeah. polished ridge. That's right where that ridge is. So it's like not only external it's like but a internal. Keyway. Yeah. That's yeah. gnarly. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It, I guess that that's how cool. it locks in. It locks in. They they yeah. literally spin all the way down. Let's uh, let's show that to the camera so yeah. you can see that. You can see clearly. Like the keyway or the what would be the horn? Yeah, and I think it's really cool about animals like this, where the horn comes off. I mean, not like it doesn't shed, right, right, know, but uh, it can detach when you're doing a euro mount, and you can clean under it and everything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. No, that's gonna. I'm excited to to work on this. Yeah, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna cut in the nose and yeah, do the horns and. Man, that'll be really neat when it's done. I can't wait to see the photos on that. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, going to go back to Wyoming. and uh, So, other than that, there we've got um, ram skulls. Okay, there we go, yeah. So, yeah. that's a ram. This was one of the early ones I did. It was a soft wood, so I, I haven't finished it yet for anybody. Um, so, we got a ram skull. We've got a uh, pronghorn. Okay, that's definitely a pronghorn. Uh, you know, this looks about as rugged as a pronghorn at the moment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that's a better better sheep's goal this, yo. Wow. And then a moose skull, which is even bigger. It's twenty about 24 inches in length. Dang, those are so massive. Yeah. So that's the moose skull. And I think that's all I have for, for uh, replicas right now. But I've also done um, caribou. Mm-hmm. So I've done deer, elk, moose, sheep, pronghorn, caribou, and then actually a guy at the sportsman show down in Puyallup, he uh, he was able to, up in Alaska, get a set of walrus tusks, and he went to the game commission or whatever and had them fill out a slip for him to legally obtain them right. before he left, and then... Um, he was able to. He's able to have them as long as he has that paper, but he can't ever cut them up or sell them. And so he he wants me to carve a walrus skull. That would be for the walrus. Awesome. Tusk. And then massive. Yeah. And it would be. I don't know if you're gonna do that on that little thing. I don't think so. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a big like this. That's like, massive. It's gonna be like. A oh big, yeah. It's a big bigger beast. than that. Bigger yeah. than that. Yeah. Um. And so he. Uh. That was one. I think I've had somebody ask me to do a bear skull. That would be cool. It would be cool. I mean, be put different. antlers or horns on it, but um, no. just be for show, which yeah. would be neat. It and would then be neat. I think the only other one that I've got asked asked about, uh, you know, of course, people, they'll ask for axis deer or blacktail or sp really specific deer. And right now I just, I only have one deer model. Well, and, I mean, if you really want to like. Exactly. If you take the skin off of a muley or a whitetail or a blacktail or an axis deer, uh, it's all generally pretty much the same. Close. So, yeah. I mean, your your dimensions might vary, right? Uh, which might give it away. 
for mm-hmm. the the you know the more experienced hunter would be like oh, that's the wrong size skull yeah but for <laughs> yeah. the most part as long as it proportionally fits the antlers yeah and the antler sets correct yeah the, I think the biggest thing that I've had uh, not an issue with but but I've noticed in mounting up some is the pedicle size you know because some are some deer are massive so oh, that, sure. that pedicle size kind of gets drowned out in this so. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or it's too big because of, uh, of a smaller deer's antler. So, it's yeah, that just, would be the trickier part. Yeah. So it's I mean, just kind of like a, a a muley in Washington is not going to be the same as you know a muley in another state as right. far as like the antler growth, especially at the base. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So, uh, so that's pretty much it for. Oh, the, oh, we already talked about the kudu. Uh. Yeah, that's cool, man. To think so about ones, you got a lot going on. You absolutely. went to the show, sportsman show. Did you go to the Oregon show? The uh, I did not go to the Oregon show. No. So you went to one after the sportsman show, though, right? I didn't. No, I actually. So what ha- ended up happening? I we were signed up to go to the Portland show, and then I didn't realize that my wife's uh, she had a, a run down in Arizona. Okay. So she went and did a a hundred k. Ultra marathon down in that's in not Arizona. a run, that's a hike. <laughs> oh man, that's a hike in tennis shoes, dude. Crazy. So it was uh, 62 miles, and uh, she ran the first half, and man, she she was pushing through. She she actually was throwing up pretty much the whole time, and she she was a trooper, man. She just kept trucking and trucking. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. It took her a lot longer to finish than she was planning, but she kept to it and got it done. So. I think um, I'd like to romanticize in my head that I could do it. No, yeah, I could. I could do the two hundred mile run with Cam Haynes, no problem. Uh, oh, dude, but that's like, nuts. it's a lot of training. It's a lot of training. I mean, like, yeah, a lot of. I tired could run, days. and then we're talking like, let's define a run. What's a run? Because I feel like I'd be like, like this most of the way. I don't really think this is a run. This is like a, a fancy jog. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, dude. They're in some of the guys that run it. They're just. They're running it. I think the guy that got first place on that run, he finished in seven and a half, a little over seven and a half hours, like seven thirty six. Wow! So for that's almost goes out to a perfect match. The time that you finish is about your pace. So he had about a seven minute and forty seven minute forty five second pace. The you whole mile? sixty two miles. Yeah. So he's running the sixty two, and then you do the math on how long it took him to finish, and, yeah. and then you figure out how many. Uh, how long it took him in minutes to do each mile. Yeah, crazy. And so it averaged out to a little over seven minute mile the whole it was, time. It was a, about seven, I think it was close to 740, 745. Oh my God. For no, 62 miles. I, I don't know. So, I mean, it, clearly it's possible. It's humanly yeah. possible. I am not in the shape to do it. Yeah. Some so, guys just go, but. That's cool. Yeah. Different art well, form for her. itself. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's where we ended up. Uh, we were signed up to go. It was the same weekend. So I just rolled over a down payment for the Oregon show over to my finish, like the, the whole payment for the Washington show. And then we went down there and, um, cool. Honestly, it was probably a good thing because of orders that came in there and the amount of time I can get them out in. If, if you know, getting more down at, at, at Portland would might have been a little bit, not overwhelming, but, right. um, a little bit too much for right now. Did you feel that speaking on the sportsman show? Did you feel, did it live up to your expectations? Did it go better than you hoped? How did it go for you? Yeah, so I, I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure going into it, you know? It was like, uh. Was this your first one? You first, said you, first sportsman show, or uh, first, first show for, for skulls. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but I've done, I've done a lot of shows otherwise selling just my chainsaw carvings, but first, first show for skulls, and it was a lot different than what I expected. I, I don't know that I really expected anything going into it because I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. I thought I would get a few more orders than I did. However, I think something else happened that I wasn't taking into consideration. The fact that a lot of older folks don't have Instagram or Facebook and any of that. They just right. have a, a web or, you know, internet to look things up and then email or in their phone number. So right. going down there, a lot of, a lot of older folks saw it. Even younger younger people saw it. Never seen it before, and it was a it was a whole other like opening of people seeing it that that hadn't seen it, you know, online or whatever. Sure. 
And if people don't know about the product, it's hard to look it up because, you know, keywords usually show sure. up that thing. So I think it was really good for getting kind of getting it out there. Um, yeah, totally. And it was it was great. It was it was awesome to be there. It was the people. perfect venue for what you do. Yeah. And it was right next to the head and horn. So it worked out great. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was really I mean, cool. it's it's awesome. I can't believe, you know, people didn't think of it sooner. Yeah, me, me too, man. Honestly, because it's uh, the machine you're using isn't new. You no. know, the process is already there. You're just using it for this. Yeah. And it's I think that there's a demand for it, you know, especially with the way people are shed hunting these days uh, that, you know, if I was a shed hunter. OK, <laughs> uh, you go and you find some sheds, you hook up with Colby here through Sculpt Skulls and you get some of these dandy skulls made up for you real nice and then you turn around and you can sell those as like you know sh like art for your men's cave or oh, whatever absolutely men's cave man cave okay men's cave. It's early. Hey. so <laughs> or whatever you know i mean there's a lot of possibilities there you could take a skull made out of wood and turn it into a lamp or, or whatever you oh know I, what I mean totally yeah and yeah super cool um i'm really excited to see how things progress for you uh it, over time yeah i want to work with you and we'll talk about this a, a, a little bit uh, yeah. after um on maybe collabing on on a project because uh i want to do cool. some of that like stuff like bone tats yeah this is it i think his name's jeremy or uh, I, I could be getting that wrong yeah i don't have his name memorized people okay super cool though but you know who i'm talking about bone yeah. tats it's um, amazing he uh he takes real skulls and carves murals of perfection into bone and it's i think that there's something similar that you could do here from an advertising and marketing perspective oh absolutely yeah uh, that would be super dope yeah i mean yeah you could, people's logos yeah exactly yeah uh stuff like that so anyways well awesome let's take a look at what you got going on let's switch gears here and yeah. uh get you over on the machine and see what that looks like and see your dremel process and, and get going perfect Kind of hot, hot that material like that. So this is getting down to the start of the eye. Yeah. So you can see it. You can see it rolling over and starting to cut the eye out there. So basically, this will cut until this hits. So it's basically copying. Yeah, it's kind of like a router, but not. Nah. Yeah. I mean, you know how a router's got a. It's got a stopping point on the edge, so you don't over remove any extra material. And basically, what you're doing is you're using that middle guide and dragging it along the surface to remove the material on the, the copy. Exactly. That thing's just really awesome, dude. I can't even believe how fast it's going. Like, you're just. Yeah, I know. Really quick. These bits are new too, and like I was saying, they cut really, really good. But the only, the only uh, downside is that they're uh, the same direction, so they're, they're a little bit more jumpy than what they normally are. Normally, it's two offset bits, so they counteract each other. Right. That's really cool. And then you do like final Dremel work, right? Yeah. So if we if we look at this middle one, obviously when it comes out of the machine, um, there's a plug on it on either side. So there's gonna be a plug here, and then there's gonna be a plug down here that come get carved in, and uh, those have to be cut off. So the next step out of the machine is cutting those off. Okay. And shaping a little bit there, and then we go over and from that point 
Uh, it's the rough out that we were showing before. So it looks something like this. Oh yeah, okay, so then I see you're hogging out the front there. Yep, cut out the front, cut out the back. And then obviously the machine has a hard time getting into these spots, so. Right, so then you use something like this. Yep. And you hog all that out. And let's see, a little bit closer. So this is a little bit further along in the process, so. Oh yeah, clearly. So obviously you can see the nose piece is all carved out, and all this is done by hand. Right. Um, all of this detail, it all gets carved in there. The, uh, the pedicles are all drilled drilled by hand for the, where the antlers attach. And like you said, you don't have a teeth. Uh, you don't have a uh, a jig for cutting those out, those pedicles. You have to do that by hand and yeah. kind of just eyeball it. Yep. That is super cool, man. And then from there, obviously, you got to go in. Like this one needs to be uh, finished sanded and then some sutures and a little bit of cleanup work and it's ready for some antlers. Well, Colby, thank you for your time, man. Of this course. This has been fun. I really like what you got going on here and I really think you got something pretty awesome. Thanks, man. In I, the works. So I appreciate cool you coming out. And grow. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. No right. problem at all. So remember people, hunt hard, hunt smart, and be safe. Yeah.